Hi everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture, we will be speaking about CSS selectors. As always, please feel free to take a look at our associated readings, which has some wonderful exercises developed by developer.mozilla.org. So let's get started. Um, in the previous component of this lecture, we introduced CSS styling essentials, right? So you should have a pretty good idea um, if you look at, for example, some of these blocks on the right-hand side, what these style sheets mean. For example, let's look at the first element we have here that we want H1 elements to have the color blue, and that we want elements with the class special to have the color blue as well. Well, the interesting thing about this is that there's some redundancy, right? Like, I don't want to have both the H1 be the color blue and the special be the color blue and have to write these curly braces both times. It'd be nice if I could combine these. CSS has a way for you to do this by simply putting a comma between the two elements that you want a particular kind of stylistic rule to apply to. So for example, I could take this long block of CSS here and compress it into a shorter block of CSS that's, I think, a little easier to read here. You could also, if you prefer to do things in a multi-line fashion, put a comma followed by a new line. Again, CSS is not particularly sensitive to the white space between these elements. Now, when it comes to CSS selectors, there are uh, a couple of different varieties that I would like to take you through, because I think knowing what the selectors are and when to apply them and how to apply them is really the, in my opinion, the hardest part of CSS. After that, it's all very straightforward, okay? Best way I think for us to learn is through an example. What you can see here on the left is I have a very simple block of HTML code. I have an H1 tag that says this is a heading. I then have two uh, P tags, right? One has a class fish and the other has an ID test. If I wanted to style these three components, what I would use is something like the style sheet here in the center. Notice that the H1 tag here, there's no dot before it, there's no hash, there's nothing. It just says H1. And what this means, therefore, is that any element that is H1 will obtain this style, which in fact, as you look at the display that I'm showing there on the right, is what happens. You get this big H1 that's in red. Now, if you look at the next two lines, we have dot fish, and then we have hashtag test. As we mentioned in the previous component of this lecture, the dot means that this governs a class. And so what will happen is we will go look at any content that has a class fish, and we're going to apply the color blue. And in fact, you can see here that this P has a class fish, and therefore in the display on the right, it gets the color blue. This hashtag here has to do with the ID of a particular element. ID is an attribute that you can assign to any tag within your HTML document. They become useful not only for the purposes of CSS, but especially as we start working on JavaScript next week. The IDs uh, and another attribute called the name will increasingly become important. But anyway, as you can see here, you can actually take this ID and you can also specify it using, for example, the hashtag and then test, and this is what will be selected. Now, remember when we spoke about specificity, I want to make it clear that the order of operations here is as of what I've shown here. When you specify an element, it's less specific than when you specify a class. And when you specify a particular ID, it's even more specific than when you specify a class. So if there were a conflict here, the ID level styling would take precedence over the class level styling as well as the element level styling. There is a, another uh, aspect to CSS, which I actually think is pretty cool, that gives you a way to select elements based on the presence of certain attributes on that element. So for example, here, I've kept everything in this CSS the same, and I've kept the HTML the same here for the most part, with the exception of these elements that I've highlighted. What I did is I added to our CSS this new rule, A, and then I opened a bracket and said title, and then I said background black. Now, what this means is that I want any A tag that has a title attribute. 
So what's in the bracket is I'm looking for an A tag that has an attribute title. I want to set the background to black on that. Well, if I look over here, I've got uh, two A tags that show up, right? One for this uh, fish class paragraph and one for the ID test paragraph. In this first one, it doesn't have a title attribute. It's just a plain old fashioned A. And so when I look here on the right, that blue paragraph has no blah, black background on it. But if I come to the paragraph where the ID is test, you can see now that there is a title attribute on that tag. So it's caught by this rule, a title, and the background gets set to black, as you see here. What goes in that um, the attribute component can go beyond just the presence of an attribute in a binary sense. It can go to even specific values of the attribute. What I'm showing you in this particular CSS block is um, a CSS element that is sensitive to A's, but then also A's that have an attribute href where that href is equal to google.com to specify that the background should be black. And if we turn our attention here to the HTML, you can see it will now catch this first A, where the href is, in fact, google.com. And we'll set that paragraph to be black, as you see on the right-hand side, which is not the case for when A was title, because we eliminated that rule, right? Now, the other thing that you can do, which I think is actually pretty neat, and which we alluded to and spoke about when introducing CSS, is define pseudo classes that style things as a function of the state of the element. So for example, we could come here to a tag, the a tag, and we could say that we want it so that on hover, on the hover state, which is uh, occurs when a mouse moves over something, we want the background to change to the color black. And now you can see that because we have two a tags here, independent of what the attributes are or anything else, when we hover over them, the background becomes black. We can also combine other selectors in order so that we can target particular elements within our documents. So for example, if we look at this last line of CSS here now, we have hashtag test, which says, well, first I'm interested in looking at um, anything that has the ID test. Okay, and within that thing that has an ID test, I'm interested in controlling the hover of any A tag. Okay, so let's come over here and see where that is. Well, here's the P with the ID test. And within this P with the ID test, there is an A tag. Okay, and so what this means is that this is the only block that's going to be governed by this particular style rule of setting the background to black. And that's in fact why, as you look over here, it's only now when we hover over the green paragraph token in uh, this line that we get the background changing compared to when we hover over the top one. There are multiple types of selectors. Um, we've gone through between the last component of the lecture and this component of the lecture. I think we've gone through almost all of them. I don't think we went through pseudo element selectors uh, or descendant combinators. But uh, I think you have almost everything you would need to deal with understanding and writing effective CSS that's using the right selector at the right time. If you're interested in learning more, I do encourage you to read through some of the online documentation and references that I referenced at the start of this lecture.